The Murfreesboro downtown area is the oldest part of the city, dating back to the 1800s, before the city had zoning ordinances. With the reconstruction project on Manny Avenue underway to improve drainage and the streetscape, the city thought it would be a good time to study this area's zoning. Joseph Adlott, Murfreesboro's planning director, answers some questions about this study. What are the boundaries of the South Manny study area? The uh, South Manny study area is the area roughly located south of East Main Street. The area is bounded by East Main Street, Middle Tennessee Boulevard, Mercury Boulevard, Southeast Broad, and South Church Street. Why were these boundaries chosen? Well, these boundaries were chosen because this area has, is a uh, contiguous area, and it's, these are major streets that help to identify the area. There's about 325 acres in this area, and it seems to share a neighborhood spirit of its own. When was the South Manny study area developed? The uh, original development, some of it takes, uh, dates back to the uh, original city that was laid out by Captain William Lytle. Uh, particularly the area around the public square. This uh, area uh, was the original part of the city that was laid out in 1811, so it's almost 200 years old. The development really progressed from there to the uh, east and uh, to the south. Some of the uh, newer areas are uh, really the area around uh, Middle Tennessee Boulevard and Mercury Boulevard. Was the South Manny study area developed prior to zoning being established in the city? The city didn't adopt zoning until the 1940s, so a lot of this area really predates zoning in our city. And, and that seems to be part of the, uh, the circumstance that caused us to really want to uh, study this area. Uh, a lot of it was developed before we had automobiles, and zoning in, in many respects had been uh, used to help cities develop a compatibility with automobiles. Uh, without the uh, automobiles, we may not have had as much need for zoning. When was the original zoning established in the South Manny study area? Well, the original zoning was established in the uh, uh, late 1940s with our original zoning ordinance. Uh, portions of the area, uh, particularly along uh, Mercury Boulevard, had not yet been developed. The uh, Housing Authority properties had not been developed at that time. When was the current zoning established in the South Manny study area? The current zoning was established in 1984. Uh, when the city undertook to rezone the entire city. The city had new leadership at that time. We had a new mayor, we had a new city council. We were facing uh, Nissan coming in. We, we were projecting a lot of growth and, and, and really the projections were right on. Uh, we have experienced a lot of growth since 1980. In fact, uh, in 1980, we had a population of about 32,000 in our city. We had an area of about 21 square miles. Today, we have a population of over 108,000. Uh, and are about 55 square miles. So we've really grown uh, almost three times our population. How does this zoning study relate to the street reconstruction project currently underway along South Manny Avenue? Well, they're really two different things entirely. But uh, the, the reality of the situation is that the reconstruction of South Manny is gonna, in many respects, uh, reawaken that area. We're really hoping that, that it will be a uh, opportunity for people to to see some very positive change in the area. And it's my belief that we need to address the zoning at this stage too. We're putting in a new street, we're going to be changing the way the street relates to the properties. We may need to open the door and see how the uh, properties relate to the street. The uh, uh, downtown, the public square, uh, is a very urban type of zone. It allows the structure to be very close to the street. It's more pedestrian friendly. People can uh, stop uh, at the stores, they can window shop, uh, and they can walk the sidewalks and, and enjoy it. Manny Avenue is gonna allow for on street parking uh, and actually encourage it. We're gonna designate places. We're gonna have very good sidewalks. So it's gonna be a place where it will be more pedestrian friendly. Are residential uses permitted in areas zoned commercial? No, they're not. Residential uses are not allowed in the, in the commercial zones, and, and that is also part of the, the situation we find ourselves in. Some of the areas, particularly uh, around uh, East Castle Street uh, to the uh, west side of Manny Avenue, are actually zoned commercial highway. Those uh, uses are non-conforming uses, and if they were to uh, uh, burn down or if we had a severe tornado, 
uh, the property owners could not reestablish those as residential uses uh, at this point. And then the other side of that is that for commercial lots, they may just be too small to be able to develop uh, with commercial structures and meet parking requirements and landscaping requirements that uh, are currently required in that zoning district. So it's, it's sort of a, a situation that's waiting to happen. Are commercial uses permitted in areas zoned residential? Uh, in some districts they are, um, but uh, uh, it depends on the districts. For instance, the commercial local zone, and there's a couple of small commercial local zones in the uh, study area, uh, residential uses are permitted uh, and commercial uses are permitted together. But uh, th that's not the situation with uh, districts like uh, RS4 or RSA. Commercial uses are not permitted in those uh, residential districts. How close may a structure be constructed to a property line in a commercial zone? In the commercial highway district and a commercial local district, the required front setback is 42 feet. Uh, the uh, side setback is 10 feet if you abut a residential use, and uh, it's 20 foot in the rear. And part of that idea, that's a, that's a suburban standard, the idea being that you'd put a parking lot out front of the building, and that would separate the building from the public street by about 42 to 50 feet is what it ends up being. That's part of the, the situation I'm seeing out there. If, uh, a lot of the existing structures are actually much closer than that, particularly the commercial structures. Some of them are uh, 5, 10, 15 feet from the street. Uh, some of them have just enough room for there to be a very thin strip of parking. Some of them uh, don't even have that uh, and have it on site. So uh, that's another reason why I wanted to look at this area and maybe consider uh, some changes to the zone. Do the same development standards apply in the South Manny Avenue study area as in other areas of the city, including newly developed areas? Yes, they do. The same zoning standards that are required on Oak Fort Parkway the same standards that apply in the avenue uh, around uh, the uh, Gateway, um, Memorial Boulevard, uh, Southeast Broad Street, all of that is the same standard. Commercial highway is commercial highway everywhere in our community, uh, even in the Manny Avenue area, even where it, uh, the development may not uh, fit it very well. Some of the lots in the area are smaller than the minimum lot size allowed by zoning. Does this affect the ability to use the property? Yes, it does. Uh, for instance, a, a, a lot that's uh, established prior to zoning in that area, a lot of those are, are 4,000, even 3,000 square feet. I know of a couple of lots that are only about 2,500 square feet. If you put a structure on that, that and, uh, and that structure is 2,000 square feet, that would be almost half the size of the lot. That doesn't leave any room for required setbacks. It doesn't leave any room for uh, parking on the site. Uh, so it, it, it can be, become almost a penalty uh, under the current zoning when it is applied to those existing lots. What is the planning department's objective with this study effort? What we want to do is to engage the community in discussion about the, their, their neighborhood and about the zoning. What we want to do is to maybe recalibrate how the zoning applies in that area. Maybe adopt a standard that will fit that area better. Uh, it's my belief that the, the city wants to see positive redevelopment in that area, particularly along Manny Avenue. And we want to see something that will uplift the community and give people an opportunity and make their uh, neighborhood nicer for the long term. Will a change in the zoning allow for new opportunities for the owners and residents? We certainly hope so. That is a, a big part of our objective. What we want to do is to create a, a good opportunities for everybody. A couple of years ago, there was a phrase that a um, rising tide floats all boats, and that's what we want to do here. We want to rise the tide. What is a non-conforming structure? A non-conforming property has a, a very awkward status. It is grandfathered if it uh, is currently in existence and it was developed prior to our current standards. Say, for instance, the, uh, the lot does not meet the minimum uh, lot size for residential use. Or say, for instance, the lot doesn't have enough parking for the current commercial uh, zone. It's grandfathered. It can continue indefinitely without anybody objecting. The owner can maintain it and keep it up, but they can't enlarge it uh, or change it unless it meets the current standards. What if your house burns down more than 75%? What if we have a major tornado swoop through there? During my tenure with the city, I've seen some of these kind of things happen. 
The problem is you can't rebuild what you've got uh, unless you meet the current standards. What we're trying to do is to get people to help us to understand what the problems they're experiencing are, uh, what they believe their neighborhood should become. And uh, we're going to try to, if, if, if it's something the neighborhood really supports, we're going to try to recalibrate the zoning for that area. How much parking is required for commercial development? Well, that's dependent upon the use. For instance, a restaurant requires one parking space for every 100 square feet of uh, floor area in the restaurant, or one for every two seats, whichever works out to be the greater. A general retail may require one parking space for every 300 square feet, the same as an office. Does on-street parking count towards required parking requirements? No, it does not. We require the parking to be met on-site and off-street, and any parking that's on the street is sort of a, a bonus. Uh, since anybody can use it, we don't count it towards anybody's required parking, even if it exists there in abundance. Is landscaping required for new development in the South Manny Avenue study area as in other areas of the city? The commercial areas, yes. Of course, we don't require any landscaping in residential areas unless it's multifamily uh, and in a multifamily complex. But for uh, commercial highway zones and commercial local zones, office general zones, yes, we would. From a planning standpoint, how is the South Manny Avenue study area different from other, newer areas of the city? Well, the, the South Manny area is a more urban in, in character. Uh, a lot of the new, uh, newer parts of the city are suburban. Murfreesboro is a suburban community. There, there's no doubt about it overall. But certain parts, particularly the older and the downtown areas, uh, are, are more urban. The Manny Avenue area has a mixture. You can, you can feel it, you can see it, you see the different types of structures. Uh, so it's, it has that character that, that, that says we're different because of how we came about. And it came about when Murfreesboro was a, a different community, really and cities and, and towns were more dense and they were more urban uh, than they have become. How can I learn more about the city's zoning regulations? The city has our zoning regulations on our website. Uh, that would be www.murfreesborotn.gov. Uh, we have it posted in the, uh, I think, the planning section. If you ever have trouble finding the, the um, the city's website or the zone order on it, you're welcome to call the plan staff at 893-6441. We'll walk you uh, through the process of finding on the website or we'll discuss it with you. Uh, or you're welcome to come down to visit us at our office here in City Hall at 111 West Vine Street. Will there be other opportunities to participate in any effort to change the zoning regulations affecting the South Manny study area? Yes, there will be. Our first neighborhood meeting is July the 19th at 5 o'clock p.m. until 8 o'clock. What we're going to try to do is have an open house type meeting. Uh, it will start at 5. Somewhere around 6 o'clock, we're going to have about a 15 minute presentation and then another 15, 20 minute uh, answers and questions. And then we're going to go back to the open house. So you can stop in anytime or, or you can be there at 6 uh, and be uh, part of the, uh, the presentation. We hope to see you there.